Hi everyone and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits, and today is February 28th, 2021. This is episode 371. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more episode. And if you're new, I hope you like what you see and you'll check out past episodes as well as joining me for future episodes. So how have you all been? I believe it's been about three weeks since I've last checked in with you um, and I have another finished object. As promised when I said I was going off of a regularly scheduled bi-weekly episode structure, I would check in with you when I had a finished product of some sort, whether that be knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, cross stitch, latch hooking, who knows what else. Uh, to show you and I have a knitting finished object to share with you today so I'm checking in with you all and hoping that you are doing well that you're staying warm it is warming up here in central Illinois and as much as I would like to think that the weather is making a turn for the warmer climate it's all a tease but it is going to be 59 degrees Fahrenheit here today and I don't know we haven't opened any windows. I did open windows in the front door at the studio yesterday. It was about 56, but it's supposed to be in the 40s and 50s. And if you're a Midwesterner like me, when you come out of those cold, frigid temperatures and it's 50 degrees, which it was the other day, and I went to uh, went to a fast food restaurant for lunch, you were like, ooh, yeah, I don't have to wear my winter coat. I'm going to roll down the windows as I drive to the restaurant and life is great and fabulous. Well, I hope life is great and fabulous wherever you are. Things are pretty good here. All things withstanding with COVID and everything else, um, things are just fabulous here other than, you know, less human interaction than I think we all would like. Even us introverts, I am very much introverted, but, you know, having still having some open, um, shop hours as well as seeing co-workers um, things have been pretty good so let's catch you up with what's been going on last time i checked in with you i told you about the grand opening of the leading men fiber arts storefront and things have been going really well we did have a really slow week when temperatures were really frigid we didn't see many people but that's perfectly fine because we've got plenty of work behind the scenes that we do every day in the studio dyeing yarn reskeining yarn shipping yarn dealing with emails and administrative work so that was perfectly fine. This week it picked up just a little bit and yesterday was a busy day for us, which is great. I hope that has really good inclinations for when the weather warms up and once COVID goes bye-bye, um, that we will see even more foot traffic. Things have been going so well that in fact, I told you last time that we hired a uh, young lady, uh, high school, uh, aged, and she's working two nights a week and Saturdays. And um, we've in fact hired another employee. So we are now a team of technically five um, to work um, th the weekdays. So um, the young gentleman is uh, rescaining for us and um, doing some other studio help. So we have two studio assistants and we have a manager, my sister, Amanda, and then Andy and myself, the dyers and owners. So things have been going really good. It was really interesting yesterday, the old owner of the shop, um, as I've said previously, our studio was a Dawn Groomers for 17 years and they moved to an old banquet hall on the outside of town um, so that they could morph their dog grooming business into a um, boarding and daycare as well. And so they have all this land and things. Well, she's never been back since we've taken ownership of the building. And in fact, we got done with the remodel and everything and she was just utterly flabbergasted to see what space she was so used to for so many years. And to also reminisce about how she worked in, I mean, our studio is, is small, um, and how she groomed in such a small space for so many years. And um, it's been two years now that we've taken over ownership of the building. So that was kind of neat to catch up with her. And um, yeah, nothing really else big that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's something and I'll be like, oh, I should have mentioned that. Um, but things have been really good here. Um, life has been good for Andy and myself and um, really, really no complaints. So 
let's get right into what I have to show you that's finished this episode. So I finished a pair of socks. These are for Andy and I call them Andy's blue socks. These were knit out of, let me bring up my show notes over here. Online Super Sock 100 Tropical Color in color number 1461. And then I used the Leading Men Fiber Arts Mini Skein in Dirty Truce for the cuff, heels, and toes. So here we are. They are done. I do a 10 round two by two rib. And then I do, um, from our basic sock recipe, I do an additional 70 rounds in stockinette. So a total of 80 rounds down the leg. I put in an afterthought waist yarn, and then I do 80 rounds down the leg, and then I do a rounded toe, which you can Google rounded toe to figure out how that works. And then I pick up my stitches and I do four rounds without decreasing, and then I do the rounded toe again on the heel. So, unfortunately I couldn't find my, um, I have one men's, one, one pair of men's sock blockers. And one of them is at the studio and the other one I think might be upstairs. And when I was grabbing stuff at the studio, these are what I had a duo of. So they're a little, little long, but I should have grabbed sock blockers we have in the store, but that's okay. So he is very pleased. He picked out his color pop of uh, cuff, heel, and toe. And he always likes to go for a pop of color, whereas I'm a little more neutral guy. And he couldn't be more pleased with the dirty truce. So these get to go off the blockers. They've been washed, they've been blocked, they've been photographed, and now he gets to wear them this week. So I'm super, I'm sure he's super excited about that. So, so those are my finished socks. And those were knit on a size one US, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. And my preferred method is two circulars um, instead of DPNs or uh, magic loop. All right, so let's catch up and talk about what I have been working on in the past three weeks. Um, you know, again, progress isn't going as quickly as one would like because I am working longer days and we're not traveling. So I get a lot of crafting done when we're traveling in between in the van, at shows, and in the hotel. It's a lot of crafting time. And I didn't realize how lucky I was to have that crafting time until we don't really travel. So um, my side crafts don't get as much work and my knitting doesn't get as much time as um, it used to, but that's okay. That's why we adjusted the recording schedule so that, you know, when I check in with you, I've got quality content to share with you. So first up, let's check in with my linen stitch cro uh, crochet blanket. I am using various fingering weight yarns held double to make approximately a DK weight and I am marling them. So I am changing colors every row, but I'm holding each color for two rows. So, and I can explain that more in detail, but I've done that in past episodes. And I'm trying to figure out which side I have my progress keeper. Here it is. Not much work this uh, these past three weeks, because again, I'm not working on this every day. So here's where I was, and here's where we're at. Again, here's the whole... There's the bottom, going back down again. And it is this wide as well. And I am using a size um, H or eight hook. And I'm using one of my um, Wild Stitchers interchangeable crochet hooks. And we carry those in the shop now and ugh, they're just, wonderful. You can buy individual hook tips, like hook ends, um, and then you buy um, hand-turned resin handles, and you can switch out your hooks so you can have a variety of different handles. It just makes crocheting a whole different ball game. So that's where I am on that. Let me just move that progress keeper now rather than trying to remember either later today or probably next weekend when I get around to working on this again. All right, so that's my crochet. And let's move on to my happenings wrap by Laura Tabbitt. I am so close to being done on this. I have like 32, okay, I have like 50 more rows plus the ending. So, but still in the grand scheme of things, it is so close to being done. 
I just would like this off the needle. So um, this uses six skeins of yarn. You need about 150 grams of a main color, which I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts Soliloquy, which is a super wash blue face Leicester wool in 150 grams. And then you need five contrasting colors or coordinating colors. I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts Spotlight, which is also a blue face Leicester, but it's 80% BFL, 20% nylon but you only need about 100 grams of the contrast. So that's why I went with the spotlight instead of five more colors of soliloquy. I didn't need all that extra yarn. So um, I am using um, Vengeance as my main color. And then my contrasting colors are Bend and Snap, Can't Quit You, Grapes of Wrath, Look on the Bright Side, and Sandcastle. And what's neat about this wrap is you use the probability of chance to select your pattern and your color sequencing. So no two wraps will ever be the same. And I am starting 17.17B 17 of AB. There's like an AB of 18 sections. And I just started 17B right here. Did I put in a, oh yeah. So I've done an okay amount of work on this. So I was in 15A last time. There's B. These stripes designate the 18 different sections. Here's 16A, 16B, then we move into 17A and 17B. I'm just starting here. And um, then I have to do 18A and 18B and then the bind off. So. It is a big one. Here it is at the, that's how wide it's gonna be. And then here's where I have worked so far. And this gets 25 buttons placed on it and there are buttonholes um, in various places up one side and then the other and on one edge. And um, so it gives you so many different ways to style this. I can't wait to play around with it once I get the buttons sewn onto it. And this will definitely be a really amazing shop sample. And I've got patterns in the shop right now, but we haven't started dyeing official kits for it probably until this is done and we can showcase it with the kit. Um, but yeah, that's going. I'm using so many of my Peat Moss Novelty yarn pouches, which we do carry in the shop as well. We do only have three left in stock right now, but I do have an order in for more. These fly out the door once we get a new order in. So it seems like I get an order in and um, that same day or the next day I'm requesting another order. So that's great that you guys love those um, so much. So. Dropped my main skein, my vengeance. All right, and that is living in one of my Whimsy Stitches uh, yarn bags that I got at Fiber in the Burrow 2019. So that's that. Next up is my Zig Zack Scarf by Christy Cam. I'm using Queensland Collection Uluru Rainbow in color number 1007, which is Cape Hillsboro, and 1010, which is War Tar Bouquet. And I'm so close to being done with this. I thought I would be done with it, hopefully today, but you know what, it'll probably, I may be checking in with you again next weekend with another finished object because I have this much of one skein and this much of another. This is a simple increase, decrease, two row, Repeat and you change colors every row and so you do it with a long color changing yarn and you get this really cool effect So you can see here from my little taco Progress keeper where I was and I've done all that much in the last three weeks so a little bit here and there very simple memorizable pattern I do put in stitch markers so I really can go on autopilot and um know what's what. I did realize that I have a drop stitch that I need to go back and tack down afterwards because I realized that yesterday and it was all the way down there and I wasn't dropping down in this increase decrease section. So I will just tack that down with some spare yarn once it is done. But here's the whole scarf so far. I really, really love how this is turning out. I was a little worried in this section where the colors weren't varying very much. But yeah, then it just, it went to town. So this would be fun to do with a solid and a variegated. You could do it with anything. In fact, I have 
long color changing uh, big box store acrylic yarns that I will be doing blankets and baby blankets with in this pattern as well. And this bag, I don't talk about my bags a lot. This is in my, what's, by the Bay Yarn Co. This, uh, she's based out of Texas. And I picked this up after the knitting at the estate retreat and she donated to the retreat. And it is a canvas drawstring bag. All right, next up is my Fade Into Advent by Lisa Ross. I'm using the Suburban Stitcher 2020 Neutrals Advent set, and um, I'm using a size 6 US 4 millimeter on that. And um, yeah, you know how you're supposed to open one ball a day? I believe I'm on uh, ball, where am I on now? 22. So I still have 23 and 24 to introduce to the scarf. I will have an extra mini skein because it does not call for a 25th in this um, pattern, but that's okay because Diane's colors are beautiful and I'm sure I will find a use or put it in my scrap blanket. So you start out doing a big diamond center motif. Could help if I showed you the right side. And my yarns are all wound around each other. This is what happens when you throw things in your bag. So you start off with this diamond center motif with your first three colors, and then you put half your stitches on hold. I've got mine on a 16 inch circular with needle stoppers, so there's no accent accidents. And then you are doing this increase, decrease um, kind of arrow motif. And you can see Diane's wonderful fade here. And we're kind of going back into some blues over here. So this is only one half of the wrap. It is very big. Hence why I have it. I've been like kind of, not my mojo's gone. I just, I'm not getting things completed because everything I have is so ginormous. So. Once the zigzag scarf is done, nothing new is getting cast on. I'm going back to my three projects on the needle. This will be my stash project. I always work on something out of LMFA and then I always have a pair of socks. That's my plan. As I say today. All right, last but not least, since I finished Andy's socks, I did cast on the other night. Um, my next oldest, self-striping sock yarn. I have a bunch of that um, online super sock, but I wanted to move on to the next company. So my next oldest was some Fiber Nymph Dye Works um, Bounce in the Beach Comer colorway, and I paired that with a Lady Men Fiber Arch Mini Skein in Poseidon. And this one is, oh, um, my Fade Into Advent is in a Bags by Awesome Granny bag. And then this project is in a new bag from Peat Moss Novelties. And this is a faux suede with cork bottom. We do have these in the shop. We, these were a prototype. We only got a few in. Um, they are in cream rather than brown. And the um, sizing of the cork to uh, suede is a little different. Um, but we do have three of these in stock um, in a cream color in our online store and in um, the storefront. So, Here's what the beachcomber looks like. It's kind of eastery, which is really funny this time of year, but it's got like a really soft brown, um, a soft sage, kind of a soft minty green, and then a soft buttery yellow. And I am pairing that with Poseidon. And I did just start the self-striping. So the other night I got the my 10 rounds of um, ribbing done and you can't really see anything. I got a little bit of brown and moving into the yellow and that's it. So those are going again on a size 1 US 2.25 millimeter needle using my high high sharps two at a time. So and those are going. So that's all that I've been working on in terms of knitting and crochet. Let's move along to um, in rehearsal. I have nothing planned that's going on the needles immediately. So let's move into behind the scenes. What am I spinning? I am currently spinning some Three Waters Farm 
uh, Polworth in the clear light dawning. This is one little strip of fiber. Um, I am working on the second two ounces currently. This is the first two ounces here. These are on my Acreworks flat pack bobbins. And I am trying to spin this a little bit thicker. We will see how it turns out once I ply it up as to um, how that works out for me. So I'm doing that a uh, little bit here and there. So let's move on then into the scene shop, my other uh, crafting. Um, I am cross-stitching a heaven and earth designs called One for Sorrow, artwork by Stephanie Law. This is what the finished product will look like. It is a magpie over some really cool stonework. It's gonna be a lot of dark colors. It's not a very um, color eccentric piece. However, there are over, I think, 90 colors in this. You wouldn't believe it. Um, oh, that's nice. I dropped my needle. This is being stitched um, two over one half stitch on a 25 count easy guide fabric. And um, I am on page five. I have just a little bit into page six. It goes to about here. And then that finishes the whole top row of pages on the design. And then it goes down from there. So there's that. Let's see if I can quickly spot my needle. There it is. We don't want to step on that. That would be bad. <laughs> so this is on a Q-snap. It's an 11 by 17. And then I'm using a needle minder from Gina's Unique Boutique. I only need one because I'm not working on a multitude of things and I don't need to collect needle minders. And then last but not least, I'm working on my Fox latch hook. I showed you this last episode that I decided to uh, invest in a latch hook kit because I had done it as a kid. And there are some really cool adult ones out there. There are also a ton of very small kids designs. And um, we do carry uh, some latch hook kits in our store as well. We've got one really beautiful woodland scene right now. Um, unfortunately, I can't get this kit to sell in the store, but I really like it. Oh, I was going to show you, I don't have a finished color design, but I can kind of give you, show you the pattern to kind of get the idea of what it's going to look like. So you can see there. So right now I've worked all along the bottom and I'm um, working into his tail area, the fox. So this is um, Moonlit Fox is what it's called. Maybe. And here is where we're at. So you can see the leaves down there and boy, those colors are vibrant when uh, working there. So it, it'll be a decent sized piece when it is done. And yeah. So I'm enjoying that a little bit here or there. It definitely goes quicker than cross stitch. It's my only thing about cross stitch is how slow it goes. Um, I may or may not have some rug hooking kits coming to the shop, so I may give myself a kit to try that out. Cause I mean, we need to have prototypes of all these different crafts in the store. So, all right, um, moving right along in the spotlight. What are we watching and reading? Um, no reading going on really, sorry, I'm being lazy taking in all the visual stimulus that I can. And um, we did finish season one and season two of Blown Away. This is a British, um, not British, it takes place in Boston. There was a British guy on it. Um, it is a reality competition uh, with glass blowing and Andy wanted to watch it. And so we were watching it during dinner and then it soon became he wanted to watch it all the time. And so we blew through the second season. Um, really enjoyed it. It was it was different, something unique, and um, definitely not a campy competition. Um, I think it worked really well. So definitely check that out. We did finish Ozark season one. That took us a little bit to get through. Um, there are three seasons out, and I believe a fourth is in um, production. This stars Jason Bateman, Laura Linney, um, as well as a variety of other people. And basically it tells the story of an accountant who is doing money laundering, who has to escape, not escape the mob, but um, in order to save his family and his life, he needs to um, regain 
recoup lost funds, and so he has a plan to um, launder money in the Lake of the Ozarks. And so they move down there to try to do that, and things ensue. So um, I, I would recommend it. I think it's really, really good. A um, little slow at times, but, you know, we dragged it out too. So um, on Andy's request, we are also watching now at dinner Interior Design Masters. This is a British competition about um, 10 different interior designers who are trying to make their name for themselves. Um, I enjoy it. I don't think that they realistically give them enough time to really do anything. A lot of the work, um, excuse my French, looks half-assed. And if I were to walk into a room after they had done it, I would be redoing most of it because, you know, they paint it and things get chipped as they're trying to put it away and they don't have time for touch-ups and this and that. So, um, in that respect, eh. but that's what I realized a lot of HGTV is, is a lot of gluing things on walls and doing things to make it work. <laughs> Um, we are also enjoying WandaVision. I believe the season finale um, is coming up this next week. So it took a big twist last episode, and we really enjoyed this week's episode. Movies-wise, um, the only thing I can really remember that stood out to me, we watched The Boys in the Band, which is based off of a play from the written in the 1960s, um, set in the 1960s. And this was on Netflix. It was produced by Ryan Murphy, and it stars... Um, Sheldon, you're all screaming his name. I can't think of it right now. Anyway, Jim Parsons. Um, it also has Matt Bomber in it and a bunch of other names that you would probably know. Um, and it's about a group of um, gay and queer um, men during the 1960s. And um, one, it's uh, set at a birthday party inside Jim Parsons' apartment. Um, at one night and what ensues during that evening. Um, I thought they did a really good job with it. I thought they really did a really nice job of adapting a play into a movie and keeping true to the play's structure where you're not trying to move settings and scenes so that things move quicker. The whole, other than the beginning, the whole movie is set inside the apartment, whether it's on the balcony or inside the apartment or bedrooms. But you can see how they pulled off of trying to do this based on a set on a stage as well. So I enjoyed that. And then last night, um, we watched The Trial of the Chicago 7, and Andy really wanted to watch this. I was kind of indifferent. And I really enjoyed the movie because it made me mad. Very, very mad, which is what it was intended to do, was to kind of revisit our past and um, the injustices that were had um, based upon... Um, specifically this trial and the Chicago riots uh, set in 1968-69. So um, it's a longer movie. Again, it's on Netflix. Um, it was, oh, who was the guy I just saw who directed it? Orkin, right? Not Orkin Man, but Sorensen? Sorensen. He's doing the new I Love Lucy movie. I've seen his, mo his name attached to that, the one that's going to have... Um, Nicole Kidman is Lucille Ball. I hope I'm blown away when I watch it. I still need to watch um, Judy. We haven't watched that either. Anyway, let's move into stash enhancement, shall we? I have two skeins of self-striping yarn. One is a final club shipment, and two was a Valentine's Day gift. So I got my final shipment of Freckled Whimsy. I decided not to re-up. Um, only because I've been stashing it, I haven't knit any of it, and um, to be honest, a lot of it is um, not necessarily my color aesthetic. There are a lot more um, feminine tones or um, warmer tones than I usually gravitate to. I usually gravitate more towards cooler tones, so this kind of flushed in or blended in some warmer tones into my self-striping, but again, I don't need to continue that. So this was the um, January 2021 colorway called Oh Happy Day. This is on our Splendid 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Base. There's 437 yards of a self-striping and 20 grams of a mini, which is kind of a purpley red. And so I enjoy Carrie very much, and I thank her for her wonderful talents in the self-striping world. I've got a bunch of her yarn. 
And then Andy reached out and ordered from Julia at Knitterly Things, home of Vesper Sock Yarn. And he bought for me and surprised for me on Valentine's Day a skein of Classic Sock, which is 20% or 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards in the Arctic Mermaid colorway. So this has um, like a turquoise, a kind of aqua, a sand color, purple and then there's like it looks like there's a speckled stripe in there too so i was thinking i might do something out of telly bean knits stephanie lotvin's knit happy with self-striping yarn with this maybe a shawl or something um i'm not sure but i was thinking instead of socks i might do something out of that self-striping book as well so those are two new stash enhancements that have recently joined the stash um, so let's move into what's our giveaway for this episode. This week, or this episode, we are giving away a skein of Madeline Tosh, Tosh, Tosh Sock in the Sea Glass colorway. This was donated by a very generous viewer, and um, it is a brilliant emerald green, and I figured with, um, you know, St. Patty's Day and March, this would be an appropriate um, skein to give away. So in order to be eligible to win this, you need to be a member of the Dramatic Knits video podcast group on Ravelry. In that group, there is already a thread open that says Madeline Tosh Sock Giveaway, and you must enter, uh, re respond to the prompt. This episode's prompt is, what was, uh, or what is something new that you've learned this past week? And you can only post once, um, no multitude of posts, um, one per entry per person. And I'd love to learn uh, what you learned this week. One thing that I learned this week was that the main character in WandaVision, Wanda, is the younger sister of uh, Ashley and Liz Olsen, the Olsen twins. Elizabeth Olsen, is that, is that who they are? I can't remember. The little Olsen twins from Full House who are no longer little and are like, you know, recluses in the fashion world. Um, that stay out of this limelight. But now that I see that, I cannot see the Olsen-ness in uh, Wanda, but um, she does a really amazing job in the show and give her much accolades to that. So that's what I learned this week. You tell me what you learned this week to be eligible to win this. All right, last episode, we were giving away some panda wool. I have this whole box here rather than me grabbing it. Um, we were giving away six skeins of panda wool, two in this blue, two in this pink, and two in this buttercream yellow, as well as a pattern keeper from Slip Stitch Studios. So all this is going to one lucky winner. In order to win, you had to have responded to the prompt last week or last episode, which is what was your favorite cartoon? And the winner of that was number 11, Gabby Abby, and that's Gabrielle from Illinois. Congratulations, Gabrielle. Um, she said my favorite was definitely Darkwing Duck. Very cool. I was never really a duck, Mighty Duck, Scrooge McDuck, Daffy Duck type of person. Have I watched the um, show with Scrooge McDuck when he dives into all the coins? Yes. Is that even remotely physically possible? No. That's, I'll leave it there. All right, so um, congratulations, Gabby. Please email me via Ravelry with your name, address, and email address, and I'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Let's move right into center stage. What's been going on in the world of leading men fiber arts? First up, I do not have the new colorway to show you because I forgot, plain and simple. Um, but it is premiering tomorrow, so check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And if you have not already done so, please sign up for our newsletter. You can do that either via the website or our Facebook group. And you will get all the know-how pictures and uh, availability of our new colorway, which is called Kind of a Big Deal. We love our puns. Absolutely love our puns. Okay, mostly I love our puns and I like the dad jokes in them. Um, and people just kind of go along with it. But anyway, um, I'm gonna give you a hint. It kind of looks like a dill pickle, but it also goes with March. So, and we have a new design coming out in April that is crochet and knit. 
and it's a type of pattern we don't usually see being made out of Liedemann fiber arts yarn that is coming out in that colorway. So just saying it may be our craft along in the Liedemann fiber arts group starting on April 1st. But we also have a new knit along being announced tomorrow in the knit along or in the newsletter. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's talk about some new items in the shop. So, so many new things because I like to shop. And when I can shop for the shop, it doesn't feel like shopping. Anyway, um, let's first off talk about three brand new yarn bases we've added to our lineup. We are going to see how these kind of go. And we're dyeing them slowly but surely and I'm um, going to kind of test them out and see if we want to carry them full term. I believe we do, but we're going to kind of see. First up, we have um, Polworth DK. So I'm not going with the fancy names anymore. I know a lot of people just want to know what the yarn is and their name. So this is Polworth DK. Um, this color right here is Harvest. And this is 246 yards for 100 grams. So this is a bit of a thinner DK weight than our traditional DK. This is a more of a truer DK. I would say the Dramaturg is a thicker DK. And this is 100% Superwash Polworth that comes from New Zealand. So this is the, we're, we're importing some new yarns in order to try this. Um, next up, we, I finally twisted Andy's arm and we brought in Mohair Silk. So this is on our ever infamous poison apple colorway um, and this is a lace weight is 459 yards to 50 grams this would be great to hold together with showstopper because you have approximately the same amount of yardage in each skein um, to get about a sport people say dk fingering weight and this is a dk i'm going to tell you that's more like a sport in my opinion um, i would hold this along with a dk to get about a worsted Hold it with a sport to get about a DK. Lace, all lace does is bump it up about one. So if that makes sense, then, you know, people think the fluff kind of fills in. I can see where you want might want to knit it as a DK weight gauge with fingering weight because it'll open up the stitches and maybe not make it as warm because mohair is so warm. But um, yeah, so that's the mohair silk. This is 72% Super Kid mohair. 28% mulberry silk. Last but not least on the new yarn bases, we said we'd never do it. And it just fell into my cart one day, so we're trying it out. This is our sparkle sock. It is 437 yards. It is 75% superwash merino. Oh, we got to fix these tags. 20% nylon and 5% Lorux. Because it says 75, 25, 5. That would be 105%. Awesome. So can you see the Lurex in there? I love Lurex compared to Stellina. I am not a fan of Stellina yarns. I feel like they are scratchy. I feel like the um, actual Stellina part comes undone. This is on our Kaleidoscope colorway, but we have dyed up just um, in the last few days a bunch of semi-solids, which really so show the sparkle e even better. Um, some other new things. We've got our um, the rest of our shipment from Paul Lee Studios, and I just posted about these on Instagram and Facebook this morning. So you have here, um, we have three of these yarn bowls. This is the, um, I think I called this one, is that the teal? Yeah, we have a teal, an aqua, and a red in this. Um, this is done, it's a Raku horsehair style yarn bowl. These are all hand thrown by Pauly Studios, Amanda and Danielle out of Kentucky. So you have your wonderful um, yarn guide here. You can also then stick your needles in there, or if you really want a permanent yard guide, you can stick it through there, but then you can't undo it. Um, these are a bit of investment, but these are such beautiful pieces. I have one not from them, but in this similar style, sitting on my coffee table. Um, that I very rarely use as a yarn bowl. It is more of a decorative pottery piece. So these are, when you consider it in terms of being multifunctional, um, highly recommend these. But we also got from them a whole bunch of mugs. We've got um, soap lotion dispensers. We've got soap dishes, sponge holders, um, and a couple utensil holders as well. So definitely check out 
that you can go on the left hand side if you click under accessories and tools then from that drop down you would click on pottery and you will find everything from Polly Studios there. Speaking of mugs and things we've got from um, Hippie Hound Studios this is an artist out of, I believe, North Carolina who does a ton of farm animals, um, especially um, alpaca and goat artwork, original artwork. And she also prints all of these in her studio with her own artwork as well. So we've got a ton of um, bags as well as some tea towels and mugs. Um, and I really loved this one. This is her own artwork. I, I won't explain this for you, but uh, that is a donkey, a very smart donkey. Spill the tea, honey. All right, so um, we have a bunch of those mugs as well. If you're looking for mugs, if you go under to, uh, accessories and tools and then go to accessories and then mugs, you will see all the mugs we have in stock. Another new addition, we've got um, Birdie Parker, I had to think of her name, double wrap knit pearl bracelets. Um, we got all 12 colors that she offered. We are currently out of stock of three of them. Um, but, and these are made out of leather. They are laser printed. Um, and I really, really like these. And they, of course, get, I have one of her um, actual sterling silver um, leather bracelets, and the leather does get much softer over time. And this is in the silver. Um, everything that is in stock, you'll see there, we are out of stock of the rose gold, the gold, and the hot pink, I think. But of course, we'll be restocking those once um, we sell out of a few of the other colors. And these do say, I don't know if you can see there, the nip and pearl. So nice little subtle um, accessory to kind of show your um, knitter pride with, um, out being, without being over the top on it. Let's see if I can actually get the snap to close. There we go. And then last but not least, I have not showcased these on social media. Um, we are now a stockist of Lina Magazine and Lina Publishing. And um, we get their products directly from Finland, which is super cool, super expensive shipping. But as long as things sell, then I don't mind that. Um, but we have Lina issue 10 there. We have um, Strands of Joy, which just got published last week. Uh, we have one more of those in stock. We had three. We have Mary J. Mucklestone's um, Fair Isle Weekend. And then we have one other book. Um, oh, 52 weeks of socks we have. And I know I heard from Lina social media that they are going to print their 52 weeks of shawls. So you know I'm getting that. Um, but this I thought was so adorable. And if you are um, a bullet journaler or if you really like the process of handwriting um, your notes and not doing everything digitally, you are going to want to take a look at this. So this is um, what I also love about all their in-house printed things other than the Lina magazine. Um, it is all woven, textured, hard covers. So this says my knitting notes and this is a knitting journal put out by Lina. And I even put a business card with the price. These do retail for 30 so that I didn't do anything to the actual book. And you can put in the front who it belongs to, all that fun jazz. But then they have um, knitting needle sizes and conversions, um, rulers, ruling, uh, ruler paper, um, and then a list of commonly used abbreviations. And then it gives you full on notes for projects. And so you can put the name, designer, yarn, how much, what color, where did you buy it, the needles used, the gauge and the size, you can give it a rating. And then you can take notes on the um, next few pages. Um, there's lined and then there's two blank sheets. Um, so you can either put in a picture, you can do a little drawing, you can do whatever you want. Um, and that goes on for quite a while. Tons of, I think you can fit 30, it says in the product description how many, no, you gotta do more than 30 in here. It's quite a lot of them. Um, you can keep track, oh, that's maybe good, but not good. 
all your yarn purchases that you've made while you're holding on to this knitting journal. And then they have graph paper in the back, so if you want to do any designing or sketching. And I think it's just a beautiful knitting journal to carry around with you um, while you are crafting and to kind of reminisce and maybe to have this be more of a memory keeper. Because I know for me, I put in all the data in Ravelry, but I do not leave a lot of notes. So this would be more of a memory keeper for me on my projects. Um, going forward. I do believe this mustard yellow, which is beautiful, is a limited edition seasonal. So if I do a restock, I can't guarantee. I think I have three or five of these, um, whether they um, will be in the mustard yellow again, or if they have to wait till next year. Um, it just depends on what they have in stock. So those are the knitting journals. So highly recommend uh, checking out those. And we have a variety of knit-alongs going on in the Leading Men Fiber Arts group. The Susanna Cowell knit-along ends today. Excuse me, I will pull for winners for that tomorrow. We are still going with the Cabin Fever um, knit-along. The mystery has been revealed. Um, and then we also have the Dive-In Cowell, um, I'm sorry, the Dive-In's over, the Sip Hat knit-along going on. Um, we will be starting another new knit along starting tomorrow. Stay tuned for information on that. And um, upcoming shows, we have been really laying low and canceling a lot of trunk shows. However, we are going to check out for one day only to Village Yarn Company in Zionsville, Indiana, because it is an easy one day trip for us. And with setup being so easy as it is, um, we can roll in there in the morning and be home at a decent time in the evening. So on Saturday, March 13th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can come out and visit us masks required um, at the Village Yarn Company in Zionsville in this cute little downtown area. And um, we hope to see you there if you can make it. So other than that, I'm going to leave you for now and go get to my crafting. And I'm probably going to take a nap because it's my day off and that's what I do. And until I see you next time that I have something to show you, I hope you make something dramatic.